what was a major event in your life and how has it affected you? The major event in my life oh, was marrying my deceased husband, Melvin Hilt. He died in a fishing accident and it affected my life very hard and lonesome. But I have had some very nice gentleman friends in these last few years. That's how it affected me. Right. So, okay. All right. What is the happiest you've ever been and why? Well, was when I met Grandpa Mel, my husband, when I met him in Santa Ana, California. My girlfriend and myself, we went for dinner in Sheets Restaurant in Seattle, in uh, uh, Santa Ana, and we met Mel and some other friends in this Sheets Restaurant. What is the saddest you've ever been and why? When I lost Grandpa Mel in the fishing accident. He was the father of Dan and Greg. What was the most difficult decision you have ever made? Why? How did it make it? How did you make it, and what happened? Well, saying goodbye to Grandpa Mel. Because he drowned from the fishing accident. How would you get a person you didn't particularly like to do something you needed them to do? Well, I would just ask them in a nice way. I would say, please help me do this project. I need help. And thank you for helping me. How do you handle a difficult or unpleasant task when it involves another individual or individuals? I just try to be kind to them. I believe in good manners and kindness. What do you do on your spare time? Well, right now I've been working on old lamps, make, trying to make some shades and make make them look kind of, uh, uh, I wash them and polish them and make the shades. I do the best I can. I met a friend in, in Port Townsend that makes lamp shades and oh, they're beautiful. And I, I hope I can do that. And I like to embroidery. <laughs> Okay, what do you like best or worst about your hometown? Oh, I, I just plain loved my hometown. Papa Mel brought me here in 1942 after World War II was over, and he told me it's God's country, and I believe it, and I've lived here ever since 1942. All right, during high school, did you do anything of which you are proud of? Well, some things. It's been quite a while. Uh, for my memory, I was born in Oklahoma in, in 1924 during the Depression, or just before it started. And then, what was the rest of the question? During high school, did you do anything of which you are proud of? Uh, yes, I played... Uh, 
basketball and I sang uh, in the choir at school. I didn't know you sang. Well, not very good, but I had a good voice. I sang. You could put. I sang on the. Uh, what do you call the, not the bleachers, but up a, up above in the. Mezzanines? What? Mezzanines, maybe? M well, kind of, yes, I think. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Well, there's an, another word for that. It's on the, not up here. <laughs> uh, a stage? Stage, thank you. <laughs> we, uh, three girls. Three of my friends, we sang on the stage in Garden Grove Grammar School. I was mm -hmm. pretty young then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If you had the opportunity to repeat the last five years, what might you do differently and why? I don't think I would change much of anything. I've been a happy person except that when I lost Bud Fuller, he came into my life and he he was great. He made me laugh. Okay. All right. What was the best book you have ever read? Oh, let's see. Pearl Buck, what did she write? She was the author. The Good Earth, I think. And who was it by? Pearl Buck. P A R L B U C K. All right. Okay. Okay. What is an average day like in your life? Well, this is uh, uh this is. Am I? No. Uh, this is March, of twenty-two. So today isn't very good because I have been a little bit on the punky side. They tell me I have a bladder in, in inflammation. All right. Who are your role models or mentors and why? Well, Andy Bev. Andy Bev Hilt. She's wonderful. She's my sister-in-law. She's still living in the 90s, and her husband was Dow Hilt, and um, Dow was Mel's brother. All right. What kind of people do you enjoy being around the most? Happy people, and people that are interested in things, people that like hobbies. And pets. Mm, Sammy. And I have Sammy Kitty, <laughs> my pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What jobs have you enjoyed the most oh. throughout your life? <clears throat> well, I had lots of jobs when I was growing older, and then Mel and I married, and we bought the Elwha Fishing Resort and we ran that for 12 years. <clears throat> that was a wonderful job and I kid about it and I say, that was my college years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what does your father or mother do for a living? Well, or did? Uh, my mother was mostly well, when the Depression hit, she worked in a orange packing, packing house in Garden Grove, and Daddy was uh, worked in the oil fields when we lived in Oklahoma. And then when we moved to Garden Grove, Daddy, we moved to Los Angeles first, and then down to Garden Grove, and Daddy worked as um, as running a boiler, a steam 
engine part for the excellent XLNT tamale business. And that is where Daddy died. He died in the night and called Mama. They called Mama and told him that Daddy had died. He was working. I guess it was his heart, you could say that. Do you have any, any brothers or sisters? What did they do? Or what did they do? I had Quentin, just a year and a half younger than myself. He became a brick mason. And I have another brother, uh, a Gale, and he became a brick mason. They worked together and did beautiful, beautiful work. Quentin came up here from up here to Port Angeles from Garden Grove and made the fireplace in the house we live in. And they both are deceased now. But I have one more brother, George. We nicknamed him Dubby because years ago they used to call if if there were two names attached to a, a someone, a brother or whoever, and Dubby's name was George William. And so years ago, they used to call him G.W. from his name, George G. and William W. So us kids got nicknamed him Dubby from G.W. And I still call him that. D-U-B-B-Y. All right. What does success mean to you? Well, learning to do things I like in life. And being successful do as well as I can because I did not go to college. All right, what religion do you believe in if you believe Protestant, in? yes. I certainly believe in Jesus. All right. And they get, and Jesus gave me an angel in Garden Grove and I saw that angel come down out of the sky one night when I was sitting on the back porch, and I really did. I saw it come down like this, honey. And then after a few minutes, she just went back up into the sky. And that guardian angel has watched over me, I'm sure. All right. How did you react to the Great Depression? Oh, well... We did live in the Great Depression from, uh, well, I was born in 24 in Oklahoma, and I guess the Depression started about 29, 1929, and we didn't, us children, my brothers and my mother and my daddy, well, I'm sure us children did not realize it was a depression. But I know at the very end, we were having a very hard time. Food was scarce, jobs were scarce. Uh, sometimes we had to put cardboard in our shoes and sometimes our food was not very plentiful. But God took care of us and we did just fine. How old were you when the Great Depression was taking place? About four or five. Or six. All right, what is one thing you will always remember from your past? Having my mother and dad, it was wonderful. And then daddy died and it was very hard for my mother because we had no money speak of and 
daddy was a very, very good daddy. And I was his little girl. Mm -hmm. All right, was anyone that was close to you in the military? Yes, Melvin, my husband. Melvin helped. What branch did they enlist? He was in the medical detachment of the Air Force. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he worked in surgery. All right, what did you what did you do to earn your money? Well, oh, in California before I came up here, before Mel brought me here, I worked in in the Garden Grove malt shop, and I loved it. I made good good malts and shakes and banana splits and hamburgers and chili. <laughs> All right. And then at the resort. Okay, what's the best memory you've had in your life? The best. Having my husband come home to me from the war. Uh, and our son Dan was born when Mel was overseas. He did not get to see Danny until Dan was uh, eight, a year and a half old. Okay, next question. Who was your closest friend that got you through the most? I believe Auntie Bev. And Uncle Dal. Alright, and last question. What is a major obstacle that you have had to face in your life? Losing my husband, Mel Hill. Sorry, and that's the end of the interview. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. Good.